So now I'm going to take you through how to make a beat with the launch key and Ableton Live Lite. But first, I'm going to talk about the launch key itself. There are three in control buttons here. The first top in control button applies to the eight rotaries and allows you to control Live's devices with those. The second applies to the faders where you can control volumes and mutes. And if you press the ninth button, it toggles to solos like so. And the bottom in control button, which applies to the pads. So with it lit, you can trigger clips and scenes. And with it unlit, you can play your drum rack. If you press and hold the top in control button and then select the first purple pad, you can control the devices of channels one to eight, then the pans of one to eight, send A, and send B, and rotaries one to eight reflect channels one to eight in live. The track left and right buttons allow you to navigate in your session left and right. The scrub controls allow you to move up and down in scenes. And you have full transport control. This top round button triggers a row of clips that you have in your session. And the lower round button stops all clips playing. There are octave up and down buttons and pitch and mod wheels. So there's a quick overview of the launch key itself. Now what I'm going to do is load in some samples into a drum rack. But before I do that, I'm going to show you a quick way to create a shortcut to access your samples quickly. I click on add folder and I navigate to music and samples and here's my Loop Masters Excite promo pack that we saved earlier on. So I've gone through this and I've taken one shot samples of the kit and I've copied them into this drum samples folder by clicking on new folder here. So I click on that folder and click on open and it creates a shortcut in live so I can access these samples quickly. So now I'm going to go to instruments, drum rack and drag a drum rack onto a channel. And with the bottom in control button unlit, you can see the pads correlate to these slots here. So I'm going to go through my samples and click and drag them firstly onto slot C1. Just going to quickly get four samples loaded onto a kit and make a quick beat. And I'm going to maximize the drum rack window here by clicking on this icon and label these channels appropriately. So that's a kick. So I right click, select rename and name that kick. And this one's kick low. And hi hat. and snare. When you're done with this, you can minimize that channel um, and you know that everything's labeled as it should be. And the samples are laid out like so. Now, if I turn on both in control buttons and press and hold the top in control button, select devices, I can then adjust the parameters of each sample within the drum rack, like so. But I'm gonna leave them as they are because they sound fine. Now the next thing that I need to do is tap in a BPM. So I click on this and I'm going to round it up to 70 BPM. Then I'm going to go to edit and I'm going to select record quantization and select 16th note. That just means that everything that I play in as I'm recording will be snapped to the grid. So now with the bottom in control button lit, I'm going to record into this clip by hitting the pad, then jump out of in control mode and play my drums. So with it turned on, I hit the pad. It starts recording into that slot. I jump out of in control mode and play my beat. So that's a pretty straightforward beat, but I'm gonna um, just adjust it a little bit. So I'm gonna double click into the clip, adjust the start and end locators so that we've got a nice four bar loop. Then I'm gonna highlight all the samples, drag the velocities up to the top to make everything uniform. And I know that every component of that beat now is at the same gain. So I'm also going to add some more hi-hats. Um, so I'm going to hold alt and click and drag the hi-hats and keep them in every bar to keep that rhythm going. Like so. And I'm going to add a fill with the snare. So if I zoom in here and copy that snare. 
So it's very simple, but I'm happy with that. Um, next up, I'm going to go outside and record some ambient noises and make a drum kit out of the noises that I make and load them into another drum rack. So I'm going to go to instruments again and drag another drum rack into the next channel. And I'm going to use my iPhone to record these noises. So on my iPhone, I've got a voice memo app. I'm going to hit record and capture some sounds, either with my feet or kicking things or punching things or dropping things or chucking things. Anything that sounds interesting. And when I'm done, I save it and simply email it to myself. And when I'm back in the studio, I can download it and simply drag it into Ableton Live. So I'm back in the studio and I'm going to access my emails, um, Google Chrome here, and I've got my inbox ready here with my email that I've sent to myself here. And I click on the email and click on download. And when the sample is downloaded, I'm simply going to click and drag it back into live. And when that loads, I'll drag it into C1. And now I'm adjusting the start and end locators like so to find transients. So there's one, if I zoom in and adjust the locators to suit, I can then hit the pads and test out the noise. That sounds all right. So when I'm happy with that sample, I'm going to click and hold Alt and drag the sample into the slot above to copy it. Then click on it again and adjust the locators again to find a different transient and a different sample for my drum rack. So this one sounds like a bit of a lower rim shot. And again, when I'm happy with that, I click holding Alt and drag it into the next slot and find something that might resemble a hi-hat or a shaker. So I actually want a couple of hi-hats or shakers in one snare. Um, you can spend a lot of time doing this. Um, I'm gonna put something together very quickly just so that you get the idea. So just take your time with this. It's a lot of fun and it'll give your beat its own signature sound. So when I'm happy, I'm going to play the track and play along to it to try and write a part. Okay, happy with that. Now I go back into in control mode, record into an empty slot, jump out of in control mode and record in my part. Okay, so I'm going to stop that there. Happy with that. In Ableton Live, I'm going to double click on the clip again and adjust the start points and the end points to make sure it's a four bar loop. And everything has been recorded in and snapped into time because of my record quantization. So I highlight it and adjust the velocities together. So to enhance the atmosphere of the samples that were recorded outside, I'm going to add some reverb by pressing and holding the top in control button, then selecting Send Day, which by default is a reverb in Ableton Live. I'm going to adjust it sounds good and then I'm going to select send B which is delay and that sounds great in contrast to the beat itself so I'm happy with that I'm going to stop that and now I'm going to remove audio channels here because we don't need them and I'm going to add a pad so I'm going to click on instruments instrument rack and pad then select a pad from simply clicking on them to preview them. When I found one I like, I click and drag it into the empty space and my pad is loaded, ready for me to play. I can adjust the parameters of that pad with the rotaries. So I press and hold the top in control button, select device control, and when I play it, I can adjust the parameters of that synth.
all of these parameter changes will also be recorded into the performance. So with the bottom in control button lit, I record into an empty slot and play my part. And I'm adjusting the filter frequency throughout the performance. So now I'm going to open up the clip again, adjust the start and end points. I didn't really like this chord here, it was a bit keen, so I'm just going to move the end point to the first two chords and have that loop, because I think that's enough. And I'm going to add some reverb. Until I'm happy and maybe some delay just really go to town on the spaciousness of that pad and I'm going to stop all clips by hitting this button it's a really handy way of stopping what's playing or you can use the transport control like that so next up I'm going to load in uh, more of an atmospheric mallet so in the instrument rack again i'm going to find a noise i like and click and drag it onto another channel and write another part that will complement this beat i record into an empty slot again and play along and I'm adjusting the brightness of this particular device as I'm playing. And this will all be recorded into the performance. Again, this is a really simple beat. I'm moving quite quickly here, um, but you get the idea. So now I'm going to add an audio effect onto that channel. So I'm gonna click on audio effects and reverb, special, and frozen build up's a good one. I'm going to drop that onto the channel. And don't forget with the launch key, you can control the devices. So press the top in control button, select device control. And now the eight rotaries that I have will control the parameters of that reverb. So adjust this as you're listening to it until you're happy with how it sounds. Again, this could take some time. So do take your time with it. Okay. Next up, I'm going to record in some bass. So I'm going to go to instruments, bass, preview sounds, and find something I like. Click and drag it onto the empty slot. And now write a bass part. It's a bit high there, so I use the octave controls to jump down. And I can adjust the parameters until I'm happy with how that bass sounds. Again, when I'm ready, with the bottom in control button lit, I hit the empty pad and record into a slot. Something really simple. Stop that. Double click the clip and adjust the start and end points to get a nice four bar loop. So now you'll see all these pads here are red to reflect the colors of the clips. Now that's not very exciting. So I'm gonna to go to each clip and show you how to differentiate between the different parts. So you right click and simply select a color and the colors are reflected in the new RGB launch key. Now this is a really handy way of keeping visual control of your session when you play live. Um, speaking of playing live, now I'm gonna create a performance. So I'm gonna copy and move clips into different scenes to create different sections of a song. I'll just rename this channel Beats. Atmosphere, pad as it is. 
effects channel and bass. So now I simply click hold alt and copy parts into various sections. So I want uh, an introduction to be quite chilled and then I want the beats come in then I want a refrain and finally I want all of the channels to play at the same time. And I use the scene up and down buttons to move between different sections. So now I can trigger clips by hitting the pads themselves and bringing sections in. Or I can use the scene launch buttons if I navigate to the next section and load all clips on that scene. So now you can see you can quickly make a song out of the beat that you've just made. And don't forget you can change the parameters of the channels with the in control button held. So you can select the sends like the delays here. And again, it makes your beat and your song that bit more interesting to listen to. At the end here, I'm going to adjust the volumes and slowly fade out the beats. Like so. So you get the idea. It's a nice simple beat. I hope you've taken something from it today. Thanks for watching.